Hi everyone, welcome. You're all muted and um, that is on purpose. <laughs> um, just so you know, there's a chat box where you can chat to the group and to each other in the bottom menu on your screen. You're probably all quite familiar with um, Zoom meetings by now. We're just gonna give people a few more minutes to arrive. Um, I think there's still a few more people joining, but welcome and thanks for being here. Um, if you're getting bored while you're waiting, um, Helen Harris um, from Start Art is going to be sharing a few um, information links, including the catalog and a few other links in the chat box. So yeah, let's just give everyone a few minutes to gather. Oh, and we are recording this um, video, just so you know, and we will be making it available afterwards who, for anyone who missed it or for anyone who arrives late. Welcome everyone. Great to see so many people joining from around the world. Thanks for your messages. Sorry you're on mute, but you'll survive in the chat box. I think we'll give it another minute. A few more people still joining. Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining. Lots of people showing up. I think we had about 100 RSVPs, which is a really great response and hopefully lots of people come along. Okay, so I think um, Nikki and Gina, let's uh, make Hi. a start in a moment, if that's okay. I'm gonna start with um, a little welcome message to everyone. So good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Julie Taylor. I'm the director of Guns and Rain Gallery, which is based in Johannesburg. And today is a special day because it's the first time in five months that we're opening a real life exhibition, albeit with a virtual opening. And we're here tonight with people from multiple different countries, um, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, Portugal, the UK, the US, Australia, um, and obviously South Africa and Namibia. There's probably a few more on that list. And in addition to the Zoom call, there's a parallel real life event with real life people where this video is being projected onto a wall as we speak in Vintuk. So yeah, strange but true, layers of real and virtual. And um, I think it's very appropriate that the show we're opening is called Connections. Um, great to be connected with all of you this evening. So just by way of brief background, um, Guns and Rain works with contemporary artists from seven different African countries. Our focus is mostly on um, social and historical and political issues, including identity politics. And for this exhibition, it's been a real pleasure to um, team up with Start Art Gallery in Bintook for this show. Um, Start is run by Helen Harris and Gina Figuera. Um, they are an emerging gallery founded in 2017 and they're doing all sorts of important work to support Namibian artists. They've been brilliant collaborators and I want to thank them for all of their hard work. Um, tonight, we also want to thank Aktafal Ilovu for uh, hosting the Bintook gathering, which is really great that that can happen in parallel. So without further ado, I want to introduce the star of the moment, artist Nikki Murray. Nikki was one of the first artists I met in Namibia when I first went scouting for artists there in early 2015. And not only was she warm and welcoming, but she was also willing to take a risk with a completely new, unknown, inexperienced gallerist. Um, she was brave and trusting enough to let me leave Vintook with a selection of artworks tucked under my arm. 
um, and bring them back to Joburg. So thank you for believing in me back then, Nikki. Um, without that kind of openness from artists, Guns and Rain certainly wouldn't have been where it is today. Um, in terms of a more formal introduction, Nikki Murray is well known for her abstract artwork. She uses a personal vocabulary of abstract forms and color relationships derived from everyday life as well as the socio-political history of Namibia and icons from around the continent. These forms are often layered using a mixture of stencils and traditional painting techniques. Much of Nikki's work explores the relationship between the, the physical and spiritual worlds, which extends into investigating the relationship between the tangible and the intangible, the signifier and the signified. Nikki has exhibited extensively in Namibia and abroad over many years. She has recently retired from 11 years as the head of the visual arts department at the College of the Arts in Bintuk. So she's played a critical role in arts education in Namibia for a long time. Um, in this beautiful new body of work, some of which you'll be seeing tonight, which makes up her solo exhibition here in Joburg, she explores connectors and connections and translates these concepts into shapes, spaces, and forms. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Nikki and Bintuk, who's going to talk in much more detail about the work. Nikki, over to you, and thanks so much for being here with us live tonight. Um, sorry, you're just, just looking for me. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. And Helen, I think you need to stop spotlighting me if I'm not already stopped. Okay. We can see slides. That's good. I think you're all good, guys. Nikki, you're good to go. Okay, well, um, thank you. It's, um, it's, it's really wonderful to know that you're all out there. Um, I'm really sorry that we can't all be together. This is, this is kind of a double first for me. I've, um, I've never ever obviously had an online exhibition before. This is, I would never be able to do this without people from Start and Guns and Rain helping me. Um, and it's also the first time I've ever had to introduce my own exhibition, which is is um, very daunting. <laughs> so I hope you, I hope you um, ask a lot of questions afterwards. I think that will help. Um, so why connections? Um, the, the name was suggested to me by my friend Karen in Cape Town, who's a teacher at UWC. And she was talking about contemporary world and how everybody's connected and how we have to be connected to, um, to be able to operate. And then of course, when, we, when COVID happened, we just, um, we all just had to learn on our feet how to be more connected. And um, just just to say that, you know, I, I know that some family and friends of mine from across the globe are, are joining and and I, and I love that idea that, and I feel like that's a gift from COVID. So it's really, it's really great that you could be here. Thank you very much. And, and, it, and that we wouldn't have thought of inviting you actually, if we'd been in a physical space. So, um, I like the, the um, Gina, can you? So, yeah, this is, this is the real exhibition. This is happening in, in Parkhurst in Johannesburg. And um, it's, it's really great for me to see it too. I love it. So, it looks so wonderful. Thank you, Julie. It's really nice. Um, so, I'm just gonna, um, say a few things about each body of work that I, that I did. Um, this is turnstiles and, and on, the, on the subject of connecting, um, turnstiles are really the, the, the link between spaces and, and, and they move. And they, they seem to be a sort of a, a very um, flimsy barrier, but anyone who's gone into a supermarket and tried to get out again knows that it's really difficult to get back out through a turnstile. So, they, they, they really are gates, they really are connectors. They, um, they, they connect to very different spaces. They also um, used in the, in the image that you see number two, turnstile gate number two, it's, it's paired with one of those industrial turnstiles that, that are really designed to, to, to be a security barrier between places. 
So I'm really interested in, in how things join, how spaces join, join up with each other and, and, um, and what, that, what that means in terms of where you are in between spaces in the liminal space that you are. So um, this, is, this, is, um, this is when I use another image, um, which is the grave image. And um, it's, they, I, I paired it with the turnstiles because uh, gra graves are also a connector. You know, it's, it's where living people meet dead people, you know, where, where, where you go to, to um, it's the last place where you basically see the people that have left. And um, I like that juxtaposition between the turnstile and the grave. And yeah. They're my parents. <laughs> um, temples are also a um, connecting place where people, where, you know, a temple is a place where people go to commune with the, the spiritual world, where they, where they link the physical and the spiritual in their lives. And um, I always use the terms, the, the temples in a, in a double image, so they are a reflection of themselves. Um, can't think of anything else. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, this is very strange. <laughs> um, yeah, the, these are these are graves. They they two they they grave markers. Um, I liked uh, you know I, I try to put them into a space where they where they seem to be in an ephemeral space where they're floating, um, where they where they where they oh, they also connect us. They're connecting us to others. Okay, um, the, the, the tunnel image is um, a connector, you know, tunnels uh, go under seas, they go under mountains, they connect one space to another. They're an open-ended um, portal where you leave one place and you, when you, when you end up in another place. And I like that, that I remember going through tunnels as a child, going through um, going through tunnels and seeing the lights on the other side and, and feeling that while, while you're in the tunnel, you're in a very strange, no, nowhere space. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's the liminality of that that really excited me. And then making the, um, making the tunnels transparent is, um, was, anyway, made me happy to do that. <laughs> um, rain. Rain is unbelievably important. Anyone who's been in Namibia or South Africa for the last few years knows that we talk about rain. Rain is a great connector between, between people. I mean, even if you know, meet strangers, if you can talk about the rain, you can make a connection with them. Rain also does this amazing thing where it connects the sky to the earth. And in Namibia, where we see the rain coming from a long way away when it does come, I love the way that um, it sweeps down to the ground and it seems to um, be a, a physical thing in itself, um, not only an ephemeral water. Um, big rain, what we all wanting and needing and, and love when it comes. Yeah, so thank you, <laughs> that's it. Be nice to see you all soon. Thanks so much, Nikki. So I'm actually going to now move into the gallery. I'm going to switch onto my phone and move into the gallery and give you a little uh, walkthrough. So please just wait a few seconds while I move in that direction. <laughs> you, can, you can keep them entertained with another line or two, Nikki. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll just tell you what's going on outside here. We've lit a fire. Martin's going to cook some Bourivos brochins for everybody. Um, we've got some wine. We've got Sandy Rudd busy entertaining the crowds. <laughs> and <laughs> they can hear her. And they're all watching this projected on a wall. The house that I'm, I'm sitting in belongs to um, a, an artist collective. And you can see the printmaking studio behind me. It's a really exciting space. And perhaps just now, um, Gina will show you some of the sculptures and things that are in the yard outside. So I hope you enjoy the exhibition. Um, hi everyone, I'm back. I don't know if you can maybe spotlight me now, Helen. I'm gonna turn my phone on its side. Hopefully everyone can see. Um, 
Nikki, can you see and hear okay? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just doing a sound check. Can you see and hear? Mm -hmm. Great, okay. So um, welcome to the gallery, everyone. Obviously it was quite interesting having to curate this show um, at a distance and, well, at a distance from the artist and at a distance from our collaborating gallery start. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange being here all alone tonight, um, but I know that you're all um, here in spirit. So yeah, this is, this is actually the entrance to the gallery. And I, I wanted to start here with one of the turnstile works. Obviously, Nikki's talked about how the turnstile is an important symbol in the show um, for an object that controls movement keeping people out as well as letting them in and being a connector of different types of space. Um, so I wanted to have, you know, that symbol sort of right at the entrance um, of, the, of the gallery space. Um, we then move on to some of the grave works here. And I know that Nikki sometimes veers away from opening conversations with the graves because maybe she's worried it could be perceived as macabre or something, but graves are such an important, if under-acknowledged, part of social life. And of course, grave sites have such a rich socio social and cultural significance for so many cultures around the world. So I, I really like the sense of visual layering here, and I chose to repeat that layering with the, the uneven stacking of the frames to kind of echo the repetition of the graves and I think it also references the layers of meaning that accumulate when we reflect on personal and collective histories. So I know the lighting is not like fantastic um, in the video, but at least you get a sense, you get a sense of this beautiful work. So I'm just gonna walk you through here a little bit. These are um, smaller works and I really love this, this set of work um, together. And then these are, these are two works from the RAIN series. And as Nikki mentioned, um, you know, RAIN is obviously a highly significant phenomenon in Southern Africa and in Namibia in particular as a desert country. Um, and interestingly, it's, it also made me think of the name of the gallery because Guns and Rain is actually the title of a book that addresses just this, um, the social role of spirit mediums and ancestors in bringing rain to northern Zimbabwe. So rain in the sense not only connects the earth and the sky but is also a result of the direct connection between the living and the dead. Um, yes, yeah, so those are two of the rain series. We move over here to another in the grave series. I'm going to try and focus for you and zoom in. Um, Nikki, I don't know if you can still hear and see okay. Maybe mm -hmm. someone just wants to give me an audio confirmation. Yeah. Yep. Great. Looks lovely. Okay. Thank you. And then these are some of the portal series. These are some of my favorite works, actually. In particular, this one on the left, which has these incredible, bright, vibrant orange colors. I love the, the bold colors, and I love the apparently endless interconnections um, that you see between these different shapes. And I can recommend that you watch the YouTube video of Nikki in her studio where she speaks about this series. She talks about um, tunnels, the concept of tunnel vision, not the medical version, but more metaphorically speaking. And the fact that tunnels not only connect, but they can also be blocked. And you know, what does, what does that mean? Um, and then this is the last, the last work, at least in, in the gallery, 
but of course um, the wider body of work is much bigger. It's over 50 works and those are all in, in the catalogue, which I think Helen has been sharing with you. Um, this last work is also one of my personal favourites. I, I find it quite um, archaeological somehow, quite primordial. It reminds me of the extraordinary rock engravings that we find um, not only in Namibia, but along the border of Namibia and South Africa, along the Kharip River, um, also across the Northern Cape. It has a very strong in, uh, sense of intuition and intuitive working, um, and has a sense of really connecting to life's core elements. Um, and it's also one of the rain, the rain series. So, you know, it's obviously very hard to give you a proper sense of uh, just how fantastic this, this show is, but um, yeah, it gives you a little, a little glimpse. And then this is the last in the portal series that I'm walking up to now. Again, very like bold, strong red colors. So yeah, there it is. I wish that you were all here with me. I can't believe that we have dozens of people all around the world on this call and that I'm here on my own, but I'm not feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> I'm delighted that you're here. And it's so fantastic that we've been able to do, do this regardless of um, the various challenges. Okay, I'm just going to turn my camera around. Give me a moment. <laughs> Great, I think I'm back. Am I back? Are you back? Okay, great. Um, so I think we're gonna, um, we, we have some time for questions and I'm gonna actually make my way back up to my stronger Wi-Fi connection. And um, then we're gonna start with, with any questions that people may have. I think um, Helen has been fielding some questions in the chat box. So I don't know if you want to maybe um, add some of your questions there. And then we can start with um, a Q&A with Nikki in a moment. Um, I'll be back with you shortly. Thanks. Thanks for all these sweet messages. Hello, everyone. Lovely to see you. I can see some of you. Suta, lovely to see you. Great. Wow. Good. You know, maybe next time I'm exhibiting, you can all be there in person. I really hope so. This feels, this feels too strange. I would, I would love to be with all of you. I mean, it's, it's so weird to decide to put up your work. You know, the doing that is, is such a decision. And then you think you're putting it up and you'll be there with it to introduce it to people. And suddenly we're millions of miles away. So anyway. <laughs> any questions okay so we've got our first question coming in from amy um she's asking nikki can you explain the quote in the front of your presentation about snakes and gates where is it from and what is its meaning for you um that that was that my last exhibition at the national gallery in vintuk was um an exhibition called presence in absence and um there were a lot of snake images in that exhibition, as well as gate images. I think I was, I was already um, thinking about the connections. And um, that was a quote from the woman who opened the exhibition. Her name is um, Rosa Namises, and she's a, a, a really well-known um, and very vocal feminist activist in Namibia. And, and, that's, and that's, that's the quote that she gave when she looked at my work. And it, it really meant so much to me because it was about it was about that choosing to, to be with the living, choosing to communicate, um, choosing to keep away from the gates. I'm, I'm not even sure now, sorry, I'm a little bit, <laughs> a little bit confused, but um, yes, I, I love that quote. I hope that answers you. 
Another question, thanks Nikki. Um, another question coming in from Valerie in Zimbabwe. Um, she's asking, have you considered painting in oils on canvas? Um, I can so imagine these themes being developed through larger scale work. I, um, yes, I definitely have. And I have worked with oils on canvas and, I, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've, I deliberately worked on paper for this work because I knew it had to be sent down to, um, sent down to Johannesburg. But um, definitely oils on canvas are a very great medium. They just, they, I think that um, now that I'm retired, now that I have more time for this, I think I'll definitely return to that kind of medium. I won't have to work so quickly and I won't be so harried, hopefully. <laughs> Great, thanks, Nikki. Um, another question coming in from um, Sabina. I'm curious about the colors in Nikki's work, particularly the connection of the reds and pinks to portals. Hmm. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you like them. Um, I really don't know how to, um, how to explain my color choices. They're all intuitive. I think it's, it's what's happening with me that day. It's what's, you know, what color comes to hand first. And then, you know, the, the thing that I find most inspiring when I'm, when I'm working is actually what hap what's happening on the page. I think it's all the years of teaching, you know, telling my students that art is only happening when the paintbrush is on the page or when the pencil is on the page. So that's how I start. I just, I just go. I don't, I don't spend too much time cognizing about what to do and how to do it before I'm there. Okay. Thanks, Nikki. Um, another question coming in from Imka. Would you tell us a bit about your process, please? Okay, well, I think I, I, I kind of covered some of it there. Um, I do, I, I go through a, a, a process of, of looking for significant shapes. I mean, and, and, that's, and that's probably the most, the most difficult thing that I do as an artist, because I'm constantly looking for significant shapes, and sometimes I'll start using one, and um, and then I realize it's not doing anything for me, so I have to abandon it. And sometimes I find a shape that is just a gift that keeps giving and I carry on using it for, for many years. So um, it's, a, it's a, a kind of, it's very hit and miss, you know, it's, it's, it's very intuitive. And um, I, I'm sorry, I can't be more specific than that, but that's how it is. Thanks, Nikki. Um, question coming in from Vichy in Vintuk. Um, congratulations, Nikki, this is beautiful. I'm curious about your depiction of the graves and of the rain. Is there a connection for you between these two concepts, rain and graves? Um, it's not a connection that I've made before. I mean, apart from that, they both fall loosely into the connector, connector kind of um, theme. Um, no, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, no, I was also curious about that because I hadn't, I also hadn't, in the context of your work and this show and the two series, I hadn't directly connected no. them. But then when I started, when I started hanging and, you know, then, then actually some of the questions around, um, yeah, sort of ancestors and spirit mediums and so on came. So, came to so some of those those works that you introduced as grave works are are titled temples, I think. No, connectors. Sorry, connectors. I suppose we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but they they they're all using those shapes and they're all using those forms, and they they are all connected. In fact, yeah, the, I mean the temples and the and the the clouds are definitely connected in in that form that I that I use a lot. That dome shape with the bars on mm. the front. Here's another question. Um, you mentioned liminal space a few times. Could you tell us a bit more about what that means for you, liminal space? Um, it's, a, it's a concept that I was introduced to um, quite recently by my clever children. So, and, and, and when they told me what it meant and, and um, how, the, how, what it meant, um, well, when, when, they, when they explained to me what it was, I was, I was completely fascinated by it because it is, um, it means the space in between. It means the threshold. It, it, it means, you know, the, the, the act of transforming into something else. And, and that to me is, is just an incredibly exciting concept that, that, that things can change, that things change from physical to spiritual, that, that things change from, from you know, that people and, and 
pe people can exist in different places. I mean, I imagine that the screen in front of me is a liminal space because you're all, you're all kind of with me, but yet you're not. You, you're all in your own sitting rooms looking lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, more questions coming in. A question from Immaculate, uh, grave, also on graves. Graves can be a sacred place and in some places you only enter graveyards when you lay flowers on the grave or for burial. Um, what do the graves signify for you? So I know you might have uh, mentioned some of the, these things earlier, um, Nikki, yeah. but I think a few people might have arrived late, so maybe you can just recap on that. Okay, so I just want to say a special hello to Immaculate. She actually opened an exhibition for me in 2013. So you're, you know, glad that you're here, Immaculate. It's nice to, to hear your question. I mean, definitely, um, graves are, are a very sacred space. They're, they're a place where you go to commune with people that, that aren't with us anymore. Um, absolutely. I mean, and, and grave sites, um, all over the world, and especially some of the, the grave sites that I've seen in communities in the north of Namibia, they're just, they really are, they're, 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 they're intensely spiritual places. They're, they're places where you, where you communicate with, with your ancestors. And, and, that, and not a place where you would visit lightly. And, and um, that's why I'm, like, I'm always a little bit worried about putting graves as a, as a title for an artwork, because I think that it, it gives people, it makes it it's a little bit creepy. <laughs> so, but I mean, they're a positive space for me completely. They are a very, they're a very positive space for me. Um, another question coming in from Amy. Are you doing any printmaking in that lovely studio behind you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the least technical person in the whole world. Every time I've tried to do any kind of printmaking or sculpture or anything that needs a bit more expertise than just holding a paintbrush in my hand, <laughs> it's, it's hopeless. So no, but there are okay, lots well, of people a, doing wonderful yeah, prints. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think there are other printmakers um, who, who uh, live and work here. So, um, so yeah, other Namibian printmakers. Um, here is another question coming in from Suta. Amazing, Nikki. Given the yearning for connections that many of us far away feel, what are your thoughts on how your latest work relates to these times when connection has become so important? You're right. I mean, it is, it's, un it's unbelievably important and, and we miss everybody who's far away that is going to have such difficulty coming home. And, we don't know when we're going to see you guys again. And, you know, that makes me sad, but it makes me really happy that we've all had to learn to do things like Zoom that we never thought we would be able to do. So that was, it's really lovely to be able to see you and, and be able to show you my work. It's, it's such a privilege and I feel really pleased about that. And I really want you to come home, come home. Yeah, lots of great questions, everyone. Thanks so much for the questions and for the feedback. Um, please keep the questions coming if you've got any more. Um, here is another question from Lincoln. Uh, your painting looks like woodcut prints. Is it your spatial style? Please tell us about it. Yeah, I've, I've actually had that thought myself, and I, th I think it's I think it's because the work is really graphic. And, you know, and because I use stencils a lot, so it, it is, it is um, you know, working with stencils makes the work look um, very graphic and, um, and, and links up with, and I do love woodcuts. So, yes, thank you. I take that as a compliment. Um, actually, on that note, Nikki, since we don't have another immediate question, maybe we can talk a bit more about your stencils. So I hadn't realized until I saw one of your videos recently that, you have some stencils that you keep for like years and years and you keep on working with them and you have like a favorite temple stencil, which I didn't know about. Um, so maybe you could tell people a little bit about that. I mean, do you keep every stencil you make? Um, if not, why not? If so, why? I do. I do keep all my stencils. I've got a, a huge pile of stencils and, um, some of them, I mean, I keep just to remind myself never to use them again because they're so awful. <laughs> but, I, but I do, I mean, the, the, some of the stencils, I know exactly where I made them. I, I, I kind of discovered that temple shape at a Tuli Pamwe workshop at the beginning of 2017. Um, it was a really, really incredible working time for me. I've, I don't think I've ever 
worked so hard and so and and been so productive in a space of 10 days it was really incredible we were in the mountains outside otavi and i mean the rainstorms up there were incredible too you know we had to scuttle inside every every couple of hours it was in the middle of a fantastic rainy season i think the last good rain before the drought and um, when i made that stem, that temple stencil and I started using it. I realised it was it was going to be just a really special thing. And I've and I, I still and I won't make another one. You know that's that's it. So I mean I, you can probably see it in the video that I made. It's really been mended quite a few times, and it's really thick with paint by now. <laughs> so so it, it 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 becomes in itself an, an object that is that is um, that is a, a very significant object. That stencil itself. That's what I was thinking. I mean, they become artworks in themselves, really. And yeah. um, there's obviously so many different layers of um, meaning, given, you know, given that you've worked with them at different times in different places for different reasons. Yeah. Um, and they're also accumulating layers of different materials and color over time. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, you realize that their shapes are incredibly, they, they're, they're such, um, I, don't, I can't even think of the word now. They they they're so sensitive. You know, if you if you cut a shape just slightly wrong, it it just doesn't have that tension inside it. It doesn't have that 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 inner strength that gives it you know enough strength to last. So, you know, just making a cross slightly bigger or slightly smaller. Same with a circle or a, or any other shape. It's um it's it's all kind of very it's a it's a tenuous process finding a right shape. And I mean, another question going back to uh, an earlier question we had about oil painting, which I think Valerie and Zimbabwe raised. Um, would you do you use uh, the stencils when you're painting with oil as well? Or no, no I have. Mm. Okay. Mm. It's usually, usually with a roller and a um, or a paintbrush or a sponge. Um, so yeah, when it's oil. I, I need to perfect that a little bit because I'm, I'm, I've been really enjoying that um, the feeling of working with with quite a watery inky mixture because then it, it, it creates a kind of a, a texture and a and a, a feeling by itself. So I think working with oil is a bit more of a deliberate action that I'll I'll have to get used to. Mm. Um, I've seen that we've got a few people who've just joined only just now and. Um, Gina, I was wondering, maybe you want to just show a few images from the gallery again, perhaps, um, if, if your presentation is still up. And then maybe while those are um, showing, if anyone has any more questions, um, please, oh yeah, here's one just coming in from Amy. Okay, great. So yeah, if we can get the slides of the gallery up again, that'll be great. Otherwise, um, Nikki, here's a question from Amy. You mentioned you worked in paper specifically for this show. Did you also adjust your sizes? I'm wondering if you normally work this size or bigger. Um, I've, I've actually spent uh, years and years and years working much smaller. Even um, I think that you know I worked I worked big when I was a student, and and after that it, it just seemed to get smaller and smaller. And I think it's because you know work takes over, family takes over. You just end up working small because it's you know that you have a limited amount of time to to get things done um, and you want to you want to kind of finish something before you've got to rush on to the next thing so I'm, I'm hoping to be to work much bigger now that i have more time since i retired very happily <laughs> so yes um i will be working bigger but i mean th this is this has been more or less the, the kind of size work that i've been doing till now so there's no these are, haven't been unusually small Mm. Thanks for that feedback, um, Nikki. So yeah, for anyone who's um, just arrived, Helen from Start Art Gallery is just sharing a variety of different online links in the chat box. So we've got there the catalog link, uh, YouTube videos of Nikki and Studio um, connection, I'm sorry, the link to uh, her work on Artsy. And yeah, I think it's almost time to, to wrap up um, but just a few, yeah, a few more notes in closing. Uh, we're also both of the galleries, Guns and Rain and Start, are very active on Facebook and Instagram. We have made a recording of uh, this event so that anyone who arrived late can catch 
the, the earlier part of the event and if you want to share it with um, friends, family, um, other artists around the world, please do share the link as soon as it's made available. We'll share that with you afterwards. Also, in terms of our the rest of our programming for the show, obviously we've been sort of forced to do a lot online, but for those who are in Johannesburg, I'm very happy to say that we are allowing visits to the gallery um, this weekend in very small groups. So it's by appointment. If you would, if you're in Joburg and you'd like to come, or you have you have a friend in Joburg who would like to attend, please get in touch. Um, we'll we'll send you um, the booking form. Um, in fact, maybe Helen could share that link um, as well. And yeah, so on Saturday and Sunday, if you want to come and visit the gallery, you'd be very very welcome. Please bring your mask, and um, all COVID regulations will be in place. But it'll be lovely to still see some other real life humans. <laughs> um, then you're probably also wondering about the lucky draw. I know that lots of you um, signed up for the lucky draw. So um, anyone who has RSVP'd for our online event, this one, or the gallery visits on the weekend, if you've RSVP'd and shown up tonight or will show up on the weekend, then you're going to be part of our lucky draw, which we will draw on Sunday night. And we will have three lucky winners for a beautiful, or three beautiful original artworks um, by Nikki. And we'll share the outcome of that with you afterwards, um, probably on social media as well. So I think um, we will wrap up um, there, but thank you so much, um, Nikki, for yeah, producing this incredible body of work and um, being here with us tonight and being so adaptable to the new circumstances of <laughs> exhibiting art under COVID. And then a very, very big thanks to Helen and Gina at start. You guys have been really fantastic. You've been really super to collaborate with and you've made my life much, much easier. It's been a real pleasure. And we've been working across three different countries, but it's been really um, seamless. So thank you all so much. Um, the crew in Vintook, wishing you a great evening with your bry and whatever else you have going. Oh, there they are. My goodness. Look at them. That's great. Hi, everyone. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm very envious. Um, <laughs> now someone's coming up to the camera. Okay. So yeah. Hi. This is great. This is great. Oh, we've got a few shout outs in the background there. Brilliant. So yeah, we'll be sharing more um, more photos of what, whatever's going on in Bintok. They're looking like they're having way more fun than we are here in South Africa. So uh, they've probably even got alcohol as well, which um, we, we certainly are not allowed here anymore. Um, but thank you so much, everyone. This has been great. Really appreciate your attendance. And we look forward to staying in touch with you. Um, have a great evening further. Thanks for coming. <laughs>